Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Total Organic Chemistry. This video, we'll be taking a look at some of the reactions that alkynes undergo, molecules with a carbon-carbon triple bond. After watching this video, the questions that you should be able to answer are how do I halogenate an alkyne? How are these halogenation reactions different from those of alkenes? How do I hydrate an alkyne? And how are these reactions different from alkenes? So we'll see that there are a lot of similarities to the reactions that alkenes undergo, so if you'd like some review on those reactions, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and take a look at those videos. The first reaction that we'll study is the halogenation of an alkyne. So I can draw this very simple alkyne here, this is propyne with three carbons, and treating it with a halogen acid like HBr will actually lead to what we call a geminal dihalide where we have both of the halogens, so two bromine atoms, have been added to this central carbon here. Geminal meaning on the same carbon. The mechanism here is very similar to those of alkenes. So we'll take our propyne starting material and our halogen acid, and one of the electron pairs in the triple bond will pluck off the hydrogen from this HBr, leaving us with the alkenyl carbocation here, which is going to be very unstable and it's going to be captured by one of the bromide ions that we've just made, giving us this intermediate, the alkenyl bromide. But we know from the episode on reactions of alkenes that this alkene will actually go on to react with another molecule of HBr. So we will repeat the process, generating the carbocation in this arrangement, and finally, another bromide ion will attack the carbocation to give us the final geminal dihalide. And these reactions are relatively difficult to stop at the alkene stage, so oftentimes we'll get a mixture of products, or mostly the dihalide product. And do notice that we get a Markovnikov addition of the halogen, because that carbocation is going to be more stable on the more substituted carbon. And again, if you need a review on Markovnikov's rules or the stability of carbocations, please go ahead and take a look at the video at the top of the screen. Another reaction we can perform is the anti-Markovnikov halogenation of an alkyne. So if we wanted the halogen on the other carbon, we could take the same starting material, propyne, and react it with HBr, and also an organic peroxide. So I can just write R-O-O-R. And this will give us this alkenyl bromide here, where we've added the bromine to the anti-Markovnikov position. We can draw out the mechanism here again. It's very similar to that of the alkenes. We start with our organic peroxide, and by heating it up or using some source of light, we can cleave this oxygen-oxygen bond homolytically, giving us two radicals of RO dot and those radicals will then react with the hydrobromic acid, again cleaving this bond homolytically, producing one molecule of the alcohol, ROH, and then also giving us the reactive bromide radical. Finally, this radical is going to react with the alkyne, so we have our propyne starting material, and that radical is going to open up one of the pi bonds of the alkyne, giving us this alkenyl radical here, and remember the radical is going to be formed on the more substituted carbon, which will give us the bromine on the less substituted carbon. And lastly, the radical on the carbon here will attack one other molecule of HBr, giving us two final products and regenerating the bromide radical. So we'll get at some sort of a mixture here of the trans and cis products, because that bromide can attack on either side of the alkyne initially. Conceivably, if you might remember from our reactions of alkenes, this alkene could go on to react with another molecule of HBr in an anti-Markovnikov process, but it turns out we actually get a pretty good yield of just the alkenyl bromide instead of it further reacting. Another note is very similarly to the alkene reactions that we studied earlier, this anti-Markovnikov peroxide reaction only works with hydrobromic acid and no other halogen acids, whereas the Markovnikov halogen acid addition works with very well with hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, and hydroiodic acid. 
So that's something to remember when adding to your sort of synthetic toolbox of reactions. Now let's change to looking at the hydration of alkenes. So again, we can start with the same starting material, this 3-carbon alkyne, and we can treat it with a mixture of water and sulfuric acid, and also adding a mercury 2-sulfate, Lewis acid. And this will actually give us the ketone here, which is acetone. So although it's called hydration of alkenes, we're actually forming a carbonyl compound. And we'll take a look at how that happens in just a second. So we will start with our alkyne precursor. And instead of drawing out the mechanism explicitly with the mercury salt, I'm just going to write H plus as a stand-in for any Lewis acid or Bronsted acid that's going to be in our mechanism. So one of the pi bonds in the alkyne will pick up that H plus, giving us, very similarly to last time, the alkene carbocation right here. And then that carbocation will be quickly captured by a molecule of water in a Markovnikov fashion. Since we're forming a carbocation, it's going to be on the more substituted carbon. And that'll give us this protonated alcohol here, which, as you might remember, we will deprotonate with another molecule of water. And that will give us this functional group that you might not have encountered before. This is called an enol, where we have an alcohol, so that's the OL part, but also an alkene, so enol. And it turns out that this enol will actually prefer to undergo what is called a tautomerization to the ketone right here. And we will study how this tautomerization occurs in later chapters, but for now just understand that anytime you form an enol, so this is a double bond next to an OH group, it is going to change and favorably be in the state of the ketone, where that double bond has just migrated instead of between the two carbons, now it's between the carbon and the oxygen. Finally, we can hydrate an alkyne in an anti-Markovnikov fashion as well. So again, starting with the exact same starting material, our propyne, we can use a hydroboration oxidation reaction very similar to that of alkenes. However, this time, instead of BH3, we'll use a very sterically hindered borane called dicyclohexyl borane. So this is just the boron with one hydrogen now and two cyclohexyl groups. We'll do this in probably a THF solvent and then follow it up with basic hydrogen peroxide in water. So the exact same reagents in the second step as we did for alkenes. And this will give us the aldehyde. So this time we've added again that oxygen to the anti-Markovnikov position. The mechanism for this will be again very similar to that of the alkenes. So we'll start with our starting material, the alkyne. And then we will have our borane reagent. And one of the pi bonds in the alkyne will attack the boron because, again, it is electron deficient at that boron. And then this BH bond will swing over to attack the other carbon of the alkyne. And that will give us this intermediate, where we have syn addition of the boron group and the hydrogen across the triple bond. And we're left with a double bond here. Then, just as in the alkenes video, we will have the hydroperoxyl anion, formed from hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide, come in to attack the boron center, because again, the hydroperoxide anion is a very good nucleophile, to form this intermediate, where we have now the boron with a negative formal charge. And then if you remember, this boron carbon bond to the substrate will swing over to attack the oxygen, pushing off this other OH group and giving us this rearranged product, where we now have that oxygen bonded to the alkene group. Then we will hydrolyze this intermediate with water and NaOH, giving us yet another enol, like we just encountered, except now the OH group is on the primary carbon. So again, this is going to be at the anti-Markovnikov position. And because this is an enol, just like before, it will also tautomerize to, this time, the aldehyde, because the oxygen is on the primary carbon. And the reason we use a sterically hindered boring reagent for this reaction is so that we don't get further reactions with the alkene. So we don't want the intermediate alkene to react with more boranes to form the alcohols. We want this to go directly to the aldehyde, which we can accomplish with this dicyclohexyl boring reagent. 
Before finishing this video, I'd like to do a very simple retrosynthesis problem with the reactions we've just looked at. So this is going to be the synthesis of this secondary alcohol from this 4-carbon alkyne. And we can see that the alcohol in the final product has 5 carbons, whereas the starting material only has 4. And a very good way we know to add carbons, of course, is through the Grignard reaction. So if I could imagine a Grignard reaction starting at a starting material of this aldehyde, and then we could use first methyl magnesium bromide in diethyl ether, and secondly an aqueous workup, so I can just write H3O+, and that will change the aldehyde to the alcohol, and also add that methyl group onto this carbon. And then hopefully you can see from the reaction that we just talked about that this aldehyde can be produced directly from the alkyne. So if we treat the alkyne with dicyclohexyl borane in tetrahydrofuran, and then follow up with, again, hydrogen peroxide, sodium hydroxide, and water, that will give us the anti-Markovnikov addition of the alcohol, which will then tautomerize to the aldehyde. So I hope this video helped you understand the reactions of alkynes and how they are similar and different to the reactions that alkenes undergo with similar reagents. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel, like my Facebook page, and visit my website on the screen. If you're willing and able, please consider donating to my Patreon page, which really helps me to continue creating all these types of content for all of you. Thanks for watching.